In this video, I want to show you guys how to create a rock, paper, scissors game. And the way it's going to work is we're going to play against the computer, and the first to win best two out of three rounds wins the entire game. So the way we're going to start out creating this program is by creating two variables, the first being the user score and the second being the CPU score. These two variables are going to keep track of who gets best two out of three first. So we're going to create our first variable of the integer data type, and we're going to call it user score. We're going to initialize it to zero, at least at first. We're going to do the same thing with the CPU score, also initialized to zero. Next, what we need to do is we need to create an infinite while loop. And every single iteration of this while loop is going to mimic a particular round in this rock, paper, scissors game. The reason it needs to be infinite is because we don't know how many rounds we have to play until someone gets best two out of three first. So we're just going to say while true to create our infinite while loop. The first thing we're going to do in this while loop is we're going to ask the user to enter one for rock, two for paper, and three for scissors. So we can do this with a simple print line function. So system.out.println. And what we're going to say is enter one for rock, two for paper, and three for scissors. Now we've asked them to enter uh, one, two, or three. Next, we need to get user input. And the way we can do this is with a particular class. And that class is called the scanner class. In order to use the functions inside of this class that we need, we have to first import this class. And I did. we can do this by just typing import java.util.scanner. And then in order to use the functions inside of the scanner class, we have to create an object of it. And I'm going to do it right here. So we're just going to say scanner call this object scan you can call it whatever you want but for simplicity's sake I'm gonna call it scan is equal to new scanner what I'm gonna pass this object as parameters is system in so now we've imported the scanner class we've created an object of the scanner class we can now use the functions necessary inside of that class to get user input and I'm gonna create a new variable called user choice so int uh, user choice and what this is going to be equal to is scan.nextInt. So what this next int function does that's located inside of the scanner class is it gets user input in the form of an integer and it's going to store it inside of this user choice variable. So as of now, we've got the user choice. We now need to get the CPU's choice. And we're going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to create the variable first. So int. CPU choice. Um, the way we're going to do this is we need to get the uh, computer to pick a random number between 1 and 3. We don't want to pick this because it wouldn't be too fun just playing a rock, paper, scissors game with ourselves. So we need to import another class, which is the random class. And this random class allows us to pick random numbers between a particular specified interval. So we're going to import this random class right here. And just like the scanner class, in order to use this random class or the functions inside of it, we have to create an object of it. So I'm going to create it right here. We're going to say random. We're going to call this object rand is equal to new random. This object requires no, um, sorry about that. This object requires no parameters. So we've uh, imported the class, created an object of the class, we can now use the functions we need uh, that are located inside of that class. So we're going to say rand.nextInt. We're going to pass to this function is 3. So this next int function located inside of the random class, whatever we pass to that function, so in this case we pass 3, it's going to pick a random number within the interval that we specified. The interval that we specified is uh, three. However, um, the way this works is it goes up two, but it doesn't include the number that we enter here. So what the random number it will pick is from the integers zero, one, or two. In order to get one, two, or three, all we have to do is say plus one, not there, plus one, so now, um, for every round or every iteration of our while loop, um, this next int method is going to pick a random 
integer between one and three between one and three and it's going to store it in our cpu choice so now we've got our user choice our cpu choice we now need to get into creating the logic for this program and the way we're going to do this is with a series of if else if statements we need to tell java what to do during any and every possible scenario that can occur so say for example we pick rock and the user picks scissors we need to tell the computer what happens then or if we pick two and java picks one we need to uh, explicitly state every scenario and then tell the computer what to do in each one of those scenarios so we can uh, take care of a lot of possibilities um, with a simple if statement and those are ties so we can say if CPU choice is equal to user choice so if it is a tie what we're going to do is we're going to just tell the user that it was a tie and no points will be awarded we're going to do this with a system that out that print line function so we're going to say tie no points will be awarded yeah okay awarded okay now from here what we need to do is we need to create an else if statement or a couple of them and these are going to be if we pick one or rock if we pick scissors and uh, if we pick paper so else if user choice is equal to two sorry one and user choice that C needs to be capitalized so is equal to one we also need to do it if user choice is equal to two and then we need to do it if user choice is equal to three Okay, what goes inside of these else if statements are, so say for example, the user choice is one, we need to create an if statement for if the CPU choice is two and if it is three, because those are the only two possible outcomes that can occur if we pick one. Although I'm sure you're, you're thinking, well, the CPU can also pick one, but we've taken care of all ties right here. So inside of these else if statements we don't have to specify one here or two here or three here so we're going to create an else if statement here or an if statement here and we're going to say if CPU choice is equal to two so if CPU choice is equal to two what we're going to say is the CPU chose paper and you have lost this round. Um, so we can do a, another print line function. So system.out.println. CPU chose paper and you have lost this round. From here, since we lost this round in the CPU one, we need to increment the CPU score. So we're just going to say CPU score plus plus and then we want to display the scores so we can do another print line function and we're actually going to do a print f function and this is slightly different than a print line and I'll go in I'll explain that to you in a second but we can say CP CPU score percent D backslash n user score percent D backslash n comma CPU score comma user score okay so what this does is this print F function is a little bit different than the print line function we've been using up here this print F function um, what it does is it takes these variables right here and it places them um, in this where these percent D's are. These percent D's are placeholders. So say CPU score is one and user score is zero. CPU score, um, it'll say CPU score 
one, user score, zero. These backslash ends are escape characters, and what they do is they go to the next line. So instead of creating two print line functions or two printf functions, I can create one and explicitly state the new line characters, and I can do it all in one uh, print line function, and it just looks much better in my opinion. So we have the logic for if the CP if our choice is one and the CPU choice is two, we need to do if the CPU choice is equal to three. So what we can say is else if CPU choice is equal to three. We're basically gonna do the same thing, so I can just copy this. Copy I'm going to paste it in here. I'm actually going to create a space, put it here. And then what we need to put is CPU chose scissors, chose scissors. And you have won this round. You have one. We need to increment our score instead since we won. So user score. And then we're going to display the two scores on the screen. So now we've uh, created every single possible outcome that can occur and what to do during those outcomes if we choose one. We now need to do the same thing for if we choose two. So I can copy this um, block of code and I'm going to paste it in here. Okay. So we need to change a few things. Um, if user choice is two, we need to do if the CPU choice is one. And what we're going to say is CPU chose rock, and you have won this round. So CPU chose rock, and you have won this round. We need to increment our score since we won. So user score. And then we're going to display the scores. And if CPU choice is equal to three, we need to say CPU chose scissors. And you have lost this round, so you've lost. We need to increment the CPU score and display the scores. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing here paste this. And we need to say if CPU choice is equal to one. And we're going to say CPU chose rock. And you have lost this round. Um, we're going to increment the CPU score. And then we need to change this to a 2. And say CPU chose paper. And you have won this round. OK. And we're going to increment the user score. And then we're going to display the scores on the screen. Um, We've now created all the logic. What we need to do next is we need to create a way to break out of this infinite while loop, okay? And the way we can do this is by creating a couple if statements. So we can say if the CPU score or the user score is equal to two, we're going to break out of this infinite while loop. So we can say if the CPU score is equal to two, we're going to um, do a print line function and say sorry, but you have lost best two out of three. We're going to tell the user that. So system dot out dot print line. Sorry, but you have lost best two out of three. And then we're going to um, display the uh, scores. So we're just going to copy this uh, line of code right here. Copy this. I'm going to paste it here. And then we need to break out of this infinite while loop. Okay, and we need to do the same thing for if the user score is equal to two because it's best two out of three. So if user score is equal to two, and 
and we need to do it right here. So paste if CPU score is equal to user score, we need to change that. So if user score is equal to two, we're just going to say congrats. You have won best two out of three. And then we're going to display the CPU score and our score. And then we're going to break out of the infinite while loop. And we will only break if the CPU score equals two or the user score equals two. So now let's make sure our brackets are in place. So we have those, we have those. Where does this go to? This goes to, we need to add another one for our class it seems. These can get very hairy. <laughs> make sure you keep track of all of them. Okay, this looks like it will work. Let's run it. Enter one for rock, two for paper, three for scissors. I'm going to pick rock. No, I do not want to cancel. One, I picked rock. Tie, no points will be awarded. I'll make this bigger. Um, enter one for rock, two for paper, three for scissors. I'll pick paper. Tie, I'll pick paper again. CPU chose scissors and you have lost this round. It displayed the CPU score and the user score. So I'm going to pick three. CPU chose paper and you have won this round, so it's one to one. I'll choose scissors again. CPU chose paper and you have won this round. Uh, I won best two out of three and it congratulates me. It says congrats, you have won best two out of three. It displays our score, CPU score is one and my score is two. So that is how you create a simple rock, paper, scissors in Java uh, against the computer. If it was helpful, I would appreciate if you liked, commented, and subscribed, and I will see you guys in future tutorials.